Okay. So, are you so doing are good? Live. We are live. Uh, let's start the paper presentation session. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, with the permission of the honorary president and the chairperson, uh, I welcome you all once again to this uh, third day of the Itihasa Saptaha 3.0 Rewriting Her Story. Uh, we have come to the paper presentation session number three, and the chairperson of this session uh, is Dr. Ambika Patel. Professor and Head Department of Museology and Dean Faculty of Fine Arts, uh, Maharaja Sayajira University of Baroda. Uh, she is also the President of ICOM India. I welcome you, ma'am, on behalf of all my uh, teammates uh, to this session. I also welcome our Honorary President, uh, Srinandan Shastri sir, uh, our participants, uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Geeta ma'am is here with us today and all other participants and the Vice President of the History Enthusiast, Ms. Nidhi Katti. Welcome you all. I request Nidhi to briefly introduce our chairperson for this session. Uh, thank you, Manali, for giving me this opportunity. But uh, I think Nidhi, we have already late, so the brief introduction is enough. But let us, uh, you know, start the session. I mean, just two minutes, I'll introduce you. Briefly, I'll introduce you, ma'am. Is it fine? Yeah, because I thought since we are delayed, we could just start the paper so that people could get enough time to speak. Uh, in just two minutes, I'll yeah. uh, briefly introduce you. Okay, yeah. Nidhi, uh, continue. Okay. Uh, as we already know, uh, Dr. Ambika Patel Mam is Professor and Head Department of Museology and Dean Faculty of Fine Arts, uh, uh, MS University of Baroda, Vadodara, and uh, she's also President of ICOM India. Uh, Ma'am is also PhD guide uh, for uh, uh, research scholars. She has published uh, papers in multiple international journals uh, and national journals too. Uh, she uh, has uh, published uh, two books uh, named as Buddhist Heritage of Gujarat, Representation, Preservation and Promotion uh, and Iron Technology in Early Historic India, a case study of uh, Gujarat. Uh, Ma'am uh, is also been awarded with uh, multiple honors. Uh, to name only some, uh, our ICOM Asia Pacific Regional Committee uh, uh, Award uh, uh, Awardee Committee, and uh, she was given this. Uh, Statistic Museum uh, Zoo Berlin has awarded her, and uh, Nehru Trust of the Indian. Collect, uh, collections at the Victoria and Albert Museum, Indian Society for Prehistoric and uh, Contrary Studies, uh, many more to uh, list. Uh, it's a privilege to have you uh, on the platform, ma'am. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation and being part uh, of uh, uh, this session and chairing this session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nadi. Uh, without any further ado, I now request our first uh, paper presenter of the day, Dr. Geeta Barikilaya, ma'am, uh, to present her paper on the topic Indian food culture and gender identity construct. Uh, Nidhi, can you please stop the screen sharing? Sure. Uh, Namaskara and good evening, uh, session chairperson Manali. Nidhi and uh, scholars. I would briefly like to share my thoughts on Indian food culture and the gender construct very briefly. Bojana in uh, Sanskrit, which means a food that is to be enjoyed. In Hindi, it, may, it is called khana, and in uh, Kannada, uh, Kannada, it is called as uta. So whatever may be the term, it represents everyday Indian culture in relation to women. Food uh, binds family and the communities and the journey from the fields to the uh, plates encapsulates an entire cultural heritage. So food culture is also a gendered construct. And I will briefly dwell upon the women's eating uh, patterns, both religious and uh, secular, procuring, preparing and serving of food and of uh, the, their uh, body image. And also in contemporary time, what is happening? So Indian social norms prefer patriarchy. That's why we find that uh, men eat the food first, 
very heartily not bothered whether the women whether they have got sufficient food left over for the women and it is i think built in the indian psyche which goes without questioning that uh, this is the norm and women do not even think of uh, even think of uh, sharing the food and having sharing the same table uh, with the uh, men so what happens this unequal distribution of food because at times in uh, in uh, um, uh, joint families you have adolescent uh, girls you have nursing mothers and uh, pregnant women so what happens they don't get their proper share of food with this unequal distribution of uh, food what happens it leads to uh, malnutrition and mortality and and we also find that in holy places uh, uh, where there is uh, um, Uh, join families you find that the patriarch will come and uh, offer pujas then he will take morsels of all the food and put it on a leaf to be given to the cow and then spread some uh, grains of rice around his uh, uh, plate so all this and he eats heartily not bothering about uh, the women will they get their share or not and it uh, continues but uh, i feel that traditionally eating together has uh, not been encouraged in india uh, because uh, uh, it is um, they feel that it is a cultural thing and it this definitely is a symbol of uh, uh, patriarchy which is very deeply uh, entrenched in uh, people's psyche and also in many families even till as late as the 1980s there was a very unhygienic uh, practice involved of the women eating from the unwashed plate of their husbands and i am witness to this because one of my cousin's wife she uh, was forced by my dodama to uh, have the food like that she did on a few occasions but then uh, this is how it has been uh, going on but now we see that the um, these uh, norms are undergoing uh, some changes with the women moving to urbanized uh, places and uh, tired to uh, places and also women also being uh, also earning so they are independent but still we find that that they also undermine percent of the uh, men in this uh, same age group so it is very important that in the first two years of a child's growth if it is not properly nourished what happens it it leads to a stunted uh, growth so the mother has to properly be uh, nourished and suppose you take a small thing like uh, uh, there is an echo coming so uh, even in as inocuous thing as comfort foods we find that there is a difference in a gender perspective what we uh, the important difference is that men would think of comfort food as something food prepared by their uh, at home by their mothers sisters wives and girlfriends whereas for the woman it is something different it is a drudgery it is something uh, to be associated with the uh, with the toil why is this so because of the women's role uh, right from bygone uh, times that she is the one who usually prepares the meals and as such is accustomed uh, not being served by anybody else so while men prefer the mothers home food it is a women who prefer snacks something like samosas bajjis and uh, some knickknacks which gives them so much of comfort and the difference here is men eat comfort foods uh, when they are very happy whereas we find that women eat when they have some emotion uh, upheaval it is to boost their emotions when they are down that they have their uh, um, this uh, snacks and uh, comfort food so even there there is a, a difference there is one line of uh, uh, research has uh, found that uh, the women uh, in advertisements you find that thoda aur garam masala dalo life mein so this is advertisement of something on these lines of everest and uh, prestige companies saying that uh, uh, if you don't prepare it properly then the men will go outside and eat so we also find that uh, women who are very thin and eat very little they are given much importance and uh, uh, they are much preferred we also find the advertisements in the matrimonial saying that thin beautiful white skit so even there there is the um, um, the divide 
And we find that when compared to women who heartily eat and or who are very healthy, these thin women need not necessarily be healthy, but it is they who are given preferences. So we find that uh, food serves to define who we are and thereby creates an identity which need not necessarily be mine own. Then we find that the women uh, keep vrats. So I would say that this is a sort of a, a tryst or a negotiating with the Almighty for the health and betterment of uh, their husbands and their family. But I would like to ask, do men keep drugs for the welfare of their uh, women, their caregivers, caretakers, without whom they would definitely be very helpless? I don't think. But in every country, it is the women who assumes the primary responsibility of uh, procuring preparing and serving meals. And food uh, uh, without um, uh, fuel is of no value. And food preparation in uh, up till the beginning of 20th century took in a lot of time. Why? Because wood, women had to go in search of wood. They have to collect it, cut it, stack it, and keep it for a few days more. Then they also, if it was not wood, if they were using coal or kerosene, they have to go to the depot, stand in the queue, and don't know how long it will take. And next is water. When water, they, when they, most of the villages or homes do not have independent uh, water supply. So they have to go to the nearest community well or to the piped water supply given by the government in which the women stand in queue and fight and they, all the energy goes there. So when um, we find that we find that uh, this is the case in the case of um, the urban uh, poor. And even when they come to the, uh, um, I mean, this is the case of uh, the villages. And even when these women migrate to the urban centers, we find that they have to go around and around for the ration. So it is not once or uh, twice, but they'll have to go three, four times, wherein the man will tell no stock come tomorrow and whatever is available, they'll again have to manage the food for the family for that, uh, um, for that uh, pe period. So we find that uh, uh, the women in uh, the urban societies, if they're educated and well off, they have the facility of uh, gadgets. They have the facility of microwaves, OTGs, and then frozen foods. And if they want, they can hop to darshanis, which are every 500 uh, um, meters as in uh, Bangalore. And we also find that if it is a mother-in-law from a rich family, she has the option of uh, ordering the, um, uh, the daughter-in-law or the cooks to do the food. And uh, she can just say that this is the recipe from her great-grandmother and she is thereby keeping the tradition alive. So we find that whether it is urban or uh, poor or the well-off, she negotiates a compromise between what is needed, what is desired, and what is actually feasible. In conclusion, women's understanding of food helps sustain the many authentic cooking traditions and well-being of our society. When their roles are studied in their larger context, they show how food acquisition and allocation depend on a whole range of uh, socio-economic uh, constraints on the women, on the households, and on the private as well as the government regulated food markets. The Indian woman's role, her dependence on a range of uh, socioeconomic uh, constraints, religious and secular family traditions, and the burgeoning food markets form a holistic approach to understanding gender constructs. Food thereby in India narrates the story of hope and resilience of the women. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the absolutely wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, if you. any of the uh, participants have uh, questions, we can take uh, just one question. Only one question, please. Okay. Uh, I think there are no questions. If we come back to discussion at the end of the session, if there is time. Uh, I now move on to the next uh, uh, presenter, Dr. Shobha Mishra. Uh, Ma'am, I request you to present your paper on Women and Quit India Movement. <clears throat> Good evening to all. I'm audible. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Uh, uh, myself, Dr. Shobha Mishra, Assistant Professor, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla. Uh, the title of my paper is Women and Quit India Movement. As we are going through the period of Amrit Kaal of our independence, this is a small tribute from myself. Uh, something is okay. It's video off. Okay. Uh, a great call of our independence. This is a small tribute to those women who participated in this movement for noble cause. 
women play a pivotal role in every aspect of society a socialist scholar herbert spencer thinks that the position of women supplies a good taste of civilization of people in indian context women are presented as a symbol of power prosperity and knowledge shakti shri and vidya she is the center of family canvas but women's participation in politics in india has a long journey from the ancient vedic period where women enjoyed all rights equivalent to men including education and their visits to samiti and vidat their participation in politics were minimized subsequently in 20th century lots of social reformers worked at the problems on the problems related to women apart from this some women organizations are also active in this field these organizations organizations uh, were from the the members of uh, these organizations were from elite class and uh, their issues were also non political we should uh, thankful to mahatma gandhi and dr b r ambedkar uh, those uh, both personalities were always on the forefront of women's liberation development participation of women in politics and public life along with gandhi ji women played uh, important role and participated in various movements like salt movement anti untouchability campaign farmers and labor movement satyagraha movement savinaya vagya and many other through these movements indian women took part in public meetings propagating indigenous item made through khadi by cut of english liquor and commodities they actively participated in rallies processions organized by political parties and they are speakers travelers volunteers also and uh, gandhi ji believes if women took part in these struggles for freedom it would be easy to achieve the goal of swaraj some renowned women which we mentioned uh, or found written and uh, those who those actively participated are uh, rajkumari amrit kaur sucheta kriplani sarala devi <coughs> and uh, sarala devi chaudhrani full name muthu lakshmi reddy sushila nair aruna asafali vijay lakshmi pandit swarna kumari bhushal kadambani gangli sarojini naidu geeta mukherjee renu chakravarti vimla dang subhadra joshi kanak desh gupta kalyani mukherjee lots of uh, ladies uh, which includes members of kranti kari isri sang members of mahila raksha samiti members of congress mahila sang etc there were many more women who also followed the revolutionary path to struggle and for uh, example <coughs> chitgaon armory case uh, that has major women participants in form of kalpana datta preeti lata vadekar other women are also uh, in this path uh, some name is bina das and suniti choudhary durga bhavi captain lakshmi sagal these are other notable women in 1942 i come to direct this topic thousands of women participated in quit india movement with a new spirit of call of mahatmas do or die on 8th august in 1942 when mahatma gandhi launched the quit india movement the very next day gandhi jawaharlal nehru and many other leaders of the indian national congress were arrested by the british government massive demonstrations took place throughout the country in the following days the significance of quit india movement lay in the broadening of its support base it includes peasants students the lower middle class and especially women women <coughs> were active throughout the movement a uh, movement which is leaderless and with the majority of men behind bars women took to the streets raised slogans held public lectures and demonstrations and even made and transported explosives there were direct involvement of women in extremist activities and the number of women martyrs were listed in this movement there were few women whose contribution of contribution to history can never be forgotten uh, i mentioned three or four only 
Ushan Mehta was one of the prominent worker of Congress radio conspiracy case. With the help of her three colleagues, Usha set up a radio transmitter secretly called the Voice of Freedom. Usually, she made an announcement in starting that this is Radio Congress from somewhere in India. The radio station used to disseminate and circulate information about protest and arrest, deeds of young nationalists, Gandhiji's famous do or die message among us the masses. Until her arrest on November 12th, 1942, Usha was sentenced to four year jail. Uh, some, uh, another woman, Aruna Asaf Ali, who was an active member on the national movement since the SALT movement with Gandhiji. On August 9th, 1942, in the absence of main leaders, Aruna presided over the national flag, flag hosting ceremony at the Gwalia Tank Medan, Bombay. She became a leader of the underground movement and was full in hiding until 1946. Okay, yes, I have two minutes. Uh, okay, yes, please take one minute okay. and continue. Okay, Sucheta Kaplani has been active political uh, in 1940 also, and uh, she travels from province to province to keep leaders to touch with one another and uh, wearing a variety of disguises. She remained hiding till 1944 when she was captured in Lucknow jail as a dangerous prisoner. Uh, and uh, one more, Rajkumari Amritkar, participated in Sal Satyagraha and Quit India Women. She is uh, mainly led uh, this procession from Shimla, uh, I would like to mention. And she also uh, uh, took the charge to publish the Harijan uh, continuously when Mahatma Gandhi was in jail. In, from her uh, residence, it is in uh, Summer Hill. And that the name of her uh, house is Mansoor Villa, where uh, uh, always all the lead national leaders uh, come and go. And uh, to, uh, normally, uh, some agitators used to uh, his her house to hold secret meetings in uh, Summer Hill and uh, also took shelters. So the role played by women who can quit India movement in 1942 is a story of devotion, sacrifice, and patriotism, and it will go down in history as a most remarkable contribution towards attainment of Swaraj. Gandhiji said, when the history of India's fight for independence comes to be written, the sacrifice made by the women of India will occupy the foremost place. Thank you. I think I have finished in time. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I do want to ask a question here. Uh, yes. As uh, the last sentence of your uh, presentation was, Gandhiji said that uh, when yeah. the pages of history are written about the national movement, the women's sacrifices will be the foremost. It will be mentioned foremost. Uh, but yes. is that really the truth that has happened after the, the independence? Is it really written on the foremost? There are so many names of women who have... Who, there are so many women whose names are not even recorded anywhere in the pages of history. Who have done yes. so much. Yes, it is. I have a problem. But then, it is like that many recognized to hai recognition to hai aisa nahi hai aur bahut sare naam males ke bhi chute hue hain to whole india isme tha but main cheez ye thi ki ye jo political involvement tha women's ka usne ek tarike se ghar se bahar nikala istriyon ko jo bahut buri tarike se hamare sirf ye tha ki is portion mein thi ki wo ghar ki hi zimmedari kar sakti hai ye relate hum us tarah se kar sakte hai ki after first world war jab bahut sare log खत्म हो गए थे मेंस वर नॉट इन फील्ड वो वहीं पर थे तो विमेंस बाहर आईं और उन्होंने बोले अपॉर्चुनिटी दी कि वो फैक्ट्रीज में काम कर रही हैं या और काम कर रही हैं तो एक तरीके से वो उस दूसरी दुनिया में आईं घर से बाहर की दुनिया में तो ये जो जितने भी वो मेंस थे और स्पेशली करा था बाहर तो इसलिए ये है कि गांधी जी का ही इन्वॉल्वमेंट था कि उन्होंने लोकल लोगों को बहुत अच्छी तरीके से पूरे आंदोलन में मलाया इससे पहले जो भी थे उसमें लोग इतना इन्वॉल्व नहीं होते थे तो ये क्रेडिट हम उनको देते हैं कि कम से कम उन्होंने नॉर्मल वुमेंस को मेन लाइन में किया आज बहुत ऐसा है कि हम लोग उनके आदर्शों को भूलते जा रहे हैं 
तो हमको उसकी तरफ भी ध्यान देना जरूरी है जी जी मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन मैम एक्चुअली टू क्वेश्चन आर पार्ट ऑफ इट आई लास्ट दम टूगेदर मेरा पहला क्वेश्चन ये है मैम लॉट लॉट ऑफ प्रोस्टिट्यूट जो थी ओ और फीमेल स्पाइज ने क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट को बहुत सपोर्ट किया हेल्प भी किया बट वी डोंट हैव देयर नेम्स उनका नाम कहीं पे भी मैंशन नहीं है तो आप क्या इसके बारे में अपने पेपर पर इंक्लूड कर रही हैं व्हाट डू यू वांट टू मेंशन अबाउट इट दैट्स द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सेकंड वन इज सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज दैट कोलकाता में ज्यादातर महिलाएं पर्टिकुलरली क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट पर कंपेयर टू बाकी स्टेट्स इंडियन स्टेट्स कोलकाता मींस वेस्ट बंगाल के वेस्ट बंगाल से ज्यादातर वो इन्वॉल्व हुई तो क्या रीजन है इसके लिए एक्चुअली जो आपका फर्स्ट पार्ट है वो तो मेरा फुल लेंथ पेपर में है काफी चीजें जैसे हम उनके लिए कहते हैं कि वो जिस डेस में रहते थे और बहुत सारी थी और ये तो साधु सन्यासी भी थे बहुत सारे भिकारी के वेश में भी थे तो ये चीज मैं इंक्लूड करूंगी कुछ नाम भी है मेंशन और दूसरा ये कि जो आप कोलकाता वाली बात करें एक तो मेन तो ये था कि वो हमारा जो ब्रिटिश इंडिया का वो राजधानी थी और इसको एक तरह से कहते थे इंटेलेक्चुअल पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया यूनिवर्सिटीज वहां सबसे पहले थी तो वहां की जो पब्लिक है वो सबसे पहले मोटिवेट हुई ये टूवर्ड्स इस तरह की नई चीजों के लिए जिसे हम मॉडर्न पीरियड बोलते हैं वेस्टर्न कल्चर से जैसे वेस्टर्न कल्चर यहाँ पर आया आधुनिकता आई आधुनिकता मतलब ऐसा नहीं था कि हम लोग मैं तो इसमें बिल्कुल भी बिलीव नहीं करती कि हम लोग आधुनिक नहीं थे पर ब्रिटिश कॉन्टेक्स में अगर आप देखें तो वो जो बाहर की एजुकेशन आई थी उसके अकॉर्डिंगली यहाँ पर लोग शिक्षित सबसे पहले वेस्ट बंगाल में हुए बंगाल कहना चाहिए पूरा वेस्ट बंगाल तो बाद में हुआ तो वहाँ यूनिवर्सिटीज पहले खुली लोग ज्यादा जागरूक हुए वहां पे ऑफिशियल्स जितने ऑफिस वगैरह थे वहां पर थे तो इसलिए जागरूकता इस फील्ड में बहुत ज्यादा जो इंटेलेक्चुअल लेवल था वो वहां आया बहुत सारे जो क्रांतिकारी षड्यंत्र थे वहां भी हुए लेकिन इसके और पीछे अगर आप जाएंगे तो ये सारा पोर्शन हमें अगर एटीन देखें तो मिडिल पार्ट से शुरू होता है लोग मतलब लोग वहां के थे और वो भी क्रांति भी स्टार्टिंग आपकी बंगाल में ही हुई थी तो बंगाल ऑलवेज इंटेलेक्चुअल पार्ट है अभी भी है और ये सप्लाई करता है इंटेलेक्ट को आज भी और बहुत सारे नाम मैंने आपके लिए इसमें जो बेंगोलीज हैं बहुत सारे वो मेन लीडर्स हैं बट ऐसा नहीं है पूरे ऑल ओवर नॉर्थ साउथ में मैंने मैंशन किया है कई सारी स्त्रियों के नाम है भी और जिनके नाम नहीं है वीमेन्स के तो वो तो ये है कि आप लोकल डायलेक्ट में जैसे हिमाचल में है एक सरला रानी है उनका है बहुत ज्यादा लोगों के नाम मेंशन है भी नहीं और रीजनल हिस्ट्री में तो लोग भूल भी गए हैं या अब किसी तरीके से जिसे कहते हैं आप जो ओरल हिस्ट्री होती है उसके थ्रू कलेक्ट कर रहे हैं कुछ कुछ बुक्स लिखी जाती है तो बस आप शायद मैंने आपको बता दिया होगा ज्यादा बोल जाते हो पढ़ाने के लिए थैंक यू स्पीकिंग ऑफ बंगाल वी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्पीकर रम्यजीत सरकार द टाइटल ऑफ द पेपर क्वींस ऑफ बंगाल हु रोड देयर ओन हिस्ट्री आई रिक्वेस्ट रम्यजीत टू प्लीज प्रेजेंट योर पेपर आई थॉट आई सॉ हिम हियर ओके Uh, the next paper is by Ms. Sakshi Katti. Is Ms. Sakshi Katti here? Ah, uh, yeah, she is present. I have seen that. Okay, wait. Ramya Ji has uh, started sharing screen. Okay. 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 Yes. Yes, sir. Can you see my screen? Oh, uh, yes, we can see your. Can you see? <laughs> yes, sir. Get the PPT. The... Is there a P? Is... No, we are seeing a word document. Just a minute. I request those participants who have their PPTs to please keep them ready. Yes, uh, we are now able to see your PPT. Okay. Thank. At first, thank you, organizers, for 
giving me the opportunity to present my paper that is the queens of bengal who wrote their own history can you put your ppt on slide show please it is this ma'am this thing can you see my ppt uh, we can see the ppt but it is not on slide show but i i have already started the slide show uh, okay you can continue <laughs> Okay. Uh, till today, women are sold as weaker sex. In medieval age, the condition of women in India, uh, till sorry, till today, uh, women are sold as weaker sex. In medieval age, the condition of women in India was miserable. Generally, they are were they were brought uh, thought to be the confined in cooking and serving male members of the house. No one can think of a female ruler, but there were some queens in Bengal. in the medieval period who by their activities proved that women are not of equal sex in this article i will be telling about the queens of bengal who are rani bhavashankari and rani chandrababa respectively rani bhavashankari rani bhavashankari learned how to ride on horse how to use sword and other arms from her early childhood she also sometimes went to the battlefield with her father she also took lessons of politics and sociology and history can you see the uh, is the my slide um, uh, yes i was moving about to or not no, your slides are not moving we are only seeing the second slide uh, can you reshare the screen uh, select the okay, just a option called entire screen just a minute <laughs> Yes. Now I think you can see my PPT and the entire screen also. Yeah, you can put it on uh, slide. Yes, but uh, when I start the slide, so then it is not moving actually. Now it will move. <coughs> you have selected okay. entire slide. Okay. Rani Bhavashankari learned how to ride on horse, how to use sword and other arms from her early childhood. She also sometimes went to the battlefield with her father. She also took lessons of warfare, politics, religion, history. Our son Kuli, when he was she was young, he said had a wish from her childhood that the person who could defeat her in battle would be her suitor. In the medieval period, it is actually hardly possible to think this type of thoughts actually. But but the Rudra Nayan, then the king of British Hindu Kingdom, became agreed. to her proposal but and uh, they, then both uh, both uh, give her give her a, 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 a given exam and both of them had to cut a buffalo near devi for ajbhar lobi in in just one chance and both of them got succeed and rudranayan married bhavashankari after her marriage she helped her husband to rule the kingdom efficiently she regularly visited the garrisons of the soldiers of the british kingdom She arranged for her soldiers to learn modern system of warfare. She, for first time in Bengal, appointed women in the army of British Kingdom. She also declared that from every family of the kingdom, there should be at least one who could know the military skills. She made it obligatory. Through this system, she hoped there would be no deficiency of soldiers in the time of emergency. She also built a navy for British Kingdom, who, which becomes very powerful. Now the kingdom is extended over Howrah, Hooghly, and a large part of eastern Bardon and Western Nepal. When her husband was tied in a critical political scenario of Bengal, when there was again and again battles between Mughals and Pathans, as an ally of the Mughal Empire and Akbar, the British Hindu Kingdom had to face many Pathan attacks. In that time, Gaur Bhawani Pur near Pandwa was the capital of British Hindu King or British Hindu Kingdom. One day, the queen went to a temple of goddess Kali, 14 miles away from the capital. Suddenly, Usman of Pathan leader attacked her, uh, on the queen, but the queen, with her women guards, defeated them. Usman so, had to capture the kingdom with making a conspiracy with Chaturbha Chakrabarti, the minister of the kingdom, but he she uh, uh, but he failed, and uh, uh, and um, the queen was aware of the conspiracy of Chaturbha Chakrabarti and dismissed him from the generalship, and. Appointed as the Bhupati Krishna Rai of Pedro Fort as the new general. 
though the pathans were lost to the king but the day again attacked the kingdom with 4000 soldiers suddenly when the queen was outside of her capital the pathans knowing the news tried to defeat the queen in his in the stands when she was almost without army except for personal civil guards she but she immediately arranged 111 elephant troops uh, 500 cavalry and 500 infantry from nearby villages she defended herself for hours till the main army and a gupati came to her rescue now pathans were in trap they couldn't bear with attacks from both front and back sides the queen killed many pathans in battle usman left the battle place broken hearted in the disgrace of foki and by, by the uh, when the news reached in the mughal court akbar became very much pleased uh, on the rani and honored him hard with the title rai wahini bhavashon now the queen chandrabhava chandrabhava was a daughter of subhash singh and a powerful governor chitwa barda and later the queen of the mallu king usman singh to a bishnupur see uh, a, a, a from a folktale it is it can uh, is known that she from her childhood know the uh, uh, knew the the style of warfare and in in her childhood when, when she was going uh, for a pilgrimage she was attacked by a portuguese uh, uh, raiders uh, on, uh, on them, against whom she bravely fought uh, and and in in that point ragunath came to her help and they gladly defeated the portuguese attack it and the, the, the um, story tells that from that both the prince and the princess for fell in love to each other um, but uh, and after the, the marriage of chandrababa and ragunath lalbai a court dancer came in bishnupur who influenced the king in her beauty and tried to forcefully capture the kingdom Chandrababa at first tried to make her husband aware of Lalbai's evil design to capture the power of the Mallu kingdom in her own hand, but the king didn't react to her words and in fact sometimes held Lalbai in her power. Chandrababa understood that to curb the power of Lalbai, at first she had to separate the king Ragunath from her. Chandrababa planned to present the king and make his brother. I request yes. you to uh, conclude within one and a half minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Ma- make his brother Gopal Singh as the next Mallu king. But when he was entering the room of Raghunath Singh, but too with a group of armed soldiers, Raghunath uh, saw them and tried to uh, tried to suicide and made suicide actually. So now Baba elected Gopal Singh to the brother of the leader Red Raghunath Singh too as the next king of the Mallu kingdom. Then she decided to be the Sathi, which is led husband in the same period. In one side, she coming out of household, she obeyed her duty to save the people of her kingdom. In other side, becoming the sweety with her husband, she showed her red, uh, showed her love for her late husband. Now, uh, coming to the conclusion, at least it can be concluded that though the condition when they took charge of their kingdoms were different, but their roles were almost same. They appeared as savior of the kingdoms and the guardian of the kingdoms. They didn't only prove that women are equal to the men, but their lives can make many women interested to write their own history. Most interestingly, Rani Khawasankari appeared in the political scenario of Bengal when the Afghans were trying to regain their lost power in Bengal. In another side, Rani Chandrababa came in the scenario when an Afghan uprising was just repulsed. In fact, her father was also a leader of the uprising. Both queens fought against the enemies of inside and outside, and Chandrababa had a tragic death. But the additional concept in the medieval period and also in the modern period that to a Hindu wife, her husband seems to her God was broken down by her, and she proved that a husband and a wife both are equal in a family and both have equal rights and equal duties. To a king, his whole kingdom is his family. But the Mallu king Raghunath Singh too became failure to fulfill his duties to his people. Which was fulfilled by the Queen Chandrababa and proved herself as an Arab ruler. They are not only pride of Bengal but also pride of India. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ram, uh, very much, Ramiji, for this uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, just one question, please. Okay. If there are any questions, please post in the chat box. If we have time for discussion at the end. I now request the next presenter, Ms. Sakshi Kati, uh, to present her paper on role of Sri Satya Sai educational institutions in women empowerment. Sakshi Kati, good evening to everybody. So my topic is role of Sri Satya Sai education institutions in women empowerment. 
Ma'am, is the presentation visible to you? Yes, it is visible. You can continue. Uh, uh, yes, Sakshi, it's visible. So as we know that there are many elders who have been uh, given their own opinion about the education. So we have here Aristotle who said that educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. So he tells that one should not just get education, but also he should he should be given an education in a, in such a way that he has to give the best thing to the society what he has received from the society. So here. According to Sathya Sai Baba, education is to broaden the heart and expand one's love. So, education just should not help us to fill our belly. It should help others. So, the true education is that which fosters a sense of oneness and draws out one's divine qualities. So, education also should help us to know our own self and promotes the blossoming of human personality. So speaking about this, Sri Sathya Sai Education Institution is one of the best education institution which aims at bringing back the ancient system of education, that is Gurukula system of education which we had. So this institution stand by the motto, to the rural, for the rural, by the rural. So as we know that, Indian scripture says that Etranaryastu Pujyante, Ramante, Tatra Devata, it means where the women are worshipped, where God resides. So, being a beneficiary of this institution, I am able to get uh, many opportunities which the institution has provided to me. So, institution provides the best education to the rural girls, which is full free of cost. So, as we know that it is a problem in India that many parents do not allow a girl child to get an education. So, they think that sometimes a girl child is a burden for the family. So, they decide to get her married and send her to other home. But here is this institution which comes to give education, especially to the rural girls who are in need of this education. So because to give an education, so here the people who have been studies, whom we consider as alumna of the campuses, so every year they come to each, every year they go to each house in the, having the scheme called Madhya Narayanbad scheme to the surrounding villages of each campus along with faculty to explain the importance of education to the villagers by showing themselves as learned example and to provide the free Recording education to progress. those students who are in thirst of getting an education but cannot afford. So, if you see, this university has been hope for many girls like me who had otherwise lost the opportunity to get an education. So, girls... And also, this education is not just giving us the subject's knowledge or the spiritual knowledge. It, uh, it is also helping us to know the whole world is our own family and we have to stand for it and we have to support for it. So, girls have been taken to different states and countries to have an exposure to how the world is and what is our role in society, having been given the beautiful gift of value-based education. So, after completing our BA graduations, we, have, we all have a different program in the university, which is internship. So, whatever we have received in this institution or a university, so this is the best platform for all of us to go and share our knowledge with the younger girls. So, it is like the parampara and uninterrupted succession where each intern looks after many departments. It is during this time that the interns are provided to stipend to look after their families. This is mainly because, as I said, that parents doesn't allow a girl to get an education in most of the rural areas. So, they think that we are girl is a burden for them. So, to reduce their burden and to support the family, institutions also gives us a stipend through which we look after our families. So, here we believe that student plus teacher plus parents can make the country strong. The institution also opens the chance for the parents to participate in the activities of this divine institution, thereby making them part of family. So education of girl children is an investment for every nation rather than expenditure. In this institution, not only will the child's academics be taken care of, but also ensures a job upon completion of their studies. So, this is one of the universities which provides the finest education because I am the beneficiary 
and i live here and the opportunity by using all the opportunity today i can look after my family very well so i tell that people who tell that girl is a burden it is not girl is not a burden in fact she is a gift to look after your family and to look after the nation so my functioning on the sole principle of love and service creating selfless mind to help others and give back to the society what the society has given them thereby attaining wisdom perfection freedom and character so at last i would like to tell that so the whole in the shri satya sai university for human excellence or the institution which is doing is in a one sentence if i tell i have to tell that i will i mention this education empowerment and enlightenment by giving the education it is empowering the girl and by empowering the girl it is making her to enlighten and to know the purpose of life and to experience that purpose of life thank you thank you very much sakshi uh, if any of the participants have any question just one question please it was wonderful sakshi wonderful presentation thank, thank you. you uh moving on to the next presenter i now request uh, suman dhanaka to present her uh, paper on women and work in india and overview yes please i'm presenting on women working it's just a simple journey how uh, the role the status women has in professions women has in ancient india in medieval and in uh, present time dr suman uh, your voice is breaking um voice So here are the first questions. Why? Uh, uh, how women in ancient India? She was uh, what kind of opportunity she had? Did she was facilitated? Did she had facility to uh, take part in public activities? Could they all come out in public and were they uh, content to take further? If they were allowed to move freely in society, what was the sphere in which they used to take an active part? were there any career options for them could they take part in administration of the country yes the men were there very active in democratic time post democratic times also but the decline gradually happened the passage of time for the system was not there at all sati was not at all but we see gradually all things happen career for women system career for women it is seen women were doing the jobs of basket making embroidery dyeing cotton spin even the state was providing them this kind of facility they can they were also excelled in making raw materials they it, uh, women were from uh, certain administrative uh, or uh, royal families they were also given training they were also military leaders so they were also engaged in bows and arrow making work agriculture definitely india is a huge agriculture country so they were having the uh, ample role in agriculture with their husband their family they were into this field the men in post vedic profession you can see they were also uh, trained as acharyas they were lady teachers like dambavati and sadhivati they can for their own life they can go for teaching or they can stop also after their marriage they were professed in grammar poetry literature in buddhism and jainism both these are uh, practices these religions they allowed women for teaching professions also though we see ki till the uh, century ad women were not uh, actually uh, they were not given the role of like uh, authors or poets or, or teachers you can see kheri gathas we can see certain uh, women kheri uh, gathas were written by women actually medical career also we can see women were uh, taking care of people of ayurvedic lines ayurved was uh, pregnant there business also women were there in business classes especially the lower women music singing dancing that was the uh, women were trained into that and the uh, royal ladies for royal ladies or for people of elite class uh, this kind of activities were there and it will be very um, astonishing that they were coached by male musicians 
and fine arts that was the hold on cookies or jo prostitutes they they were having got a hold on fine arts dancing girls spies in modern period we see these spies uh, women were uh, employed as spies in secret services department a uh, parasol bearer door keepers guard guards head dressers in a royal court they got a system as we are um, watching from last week uh, three days the vedasis were prevalent in uh, southern indian temples and certainly there were certain women as administrators uh, they were helping as regents or even they independently acted if the king is not there we had many examples and in the medieval society like we see the the century onwards or rather the 7th century onwards the decline uh, the speed of decline of women rights to progress that enhances so in by medieval society we see certain social evil were there and because uh, there was lack of education the agents like the females were denied of education rather say and uh, the rights actually when you are having no education the rights also goes and your freedom your rights they are certain practice like sati for the female infanticide uh, child marriages widow who dowry they all were at boom sati prata we find some instances in uh, other way but that was not so prevalent it was not a practice actually in uh, ancient times but in medieval times we can see all these social evils all these social taboos they put women to uh, lower status in society and uh, during colonial period we can see uh, to uplift women to uh, let them come out of these villages social reformers came forward who uh, they were male only raja ram mohan roy he saw his abhi uh, she was uh, forcibly put for sati ishwar chandra vidya sagar who took campaign for widow uh, marriage swami jan sasuti along with his uh, arya samaj he is worked lot in uh, rajasthan in his village had quartered at the and gv agarwal actually in uh, and pandita ramabai in their work in maharashtra and there were certain women organizations who were also working for uh, bringing rights of these women bharat mahila parishad women in india association uh, national council of women in india all these women conferences this work of reform though it went uh, into hands of um, male reformers earlier but later women also started the working for it and they raised their voice for women's suffrage and women rights in independent india we find today that there are certain fields where in women in every field in society women are excelling but the ratio is in comparison to men is making education politics finance trade commerce defense banking medical and it and entertainment sector everywhere women is there are the other women i mean niti uh, katina and uh, this one ma'am you are uh, organizing this on our it platform international webinar so thanks to you so women are excelling in many fields right now but the percentage again varies if you see in uh, medical and it we see 34% of women representation we can see and uh, in politics we see in uh, like uh, lok sabha we have only 14.94 and in rajya sabha 14.05 representation male to female uh, ratio in rural areas was in 19 sorry 2021 it was in uh, it was the ratio was uh, 949 2000 and in urban areas 929 2000 as per the indexes by national health survey uh, of this year 2022 uh, sorry last year sorry, it was uh, uh, ma'am uh, you have to conclude within 1 minute okay Uh, these are the certain challenges which women face is low, uh, low wages violence and sexual harassment career growth and which women though they are working but they are not having certainly these uh, they are uh, lower down at these angles women uh, now i i uh, am asking the why we always try to appreciate we are appreciating women are working they are engaged in certain things but we are always appreciating through the lens of patriarchy so if women are doing uh, best as mothers they are good at as uh, as home makers and they are appreciated then if they are balancing their both life their uh, housewife life and their business or professional life then we are appreciating them though women are getting more gold medals we can see but if the job priority is the women in 
comparison to women, men are giving low priority. And uh, though women are uh, nowadays, you can see in outer circles, they are earners, but still, again, we think if they should uh, gather the needs of house. Now, it's a high time we should bridge the gaps in education, re-legislate re, uh, gender roles, gender division of labor, and address uh, bias attributes. Uh, we must see more women in position of power in every sector. Women should be uh, recognized and enabled for their strengths and assessing women not like acting, uh, not as acting like men. It's not that 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 it's and overcoming social, political, cultural barriers uh, to women part participation. Uh, it's high time. Feminism, not as men versus women, but we must think in terms of men and women together working for the development of society, nation, all aspects of development. And uh, with this, I conclude. Uh, with this, I stop here. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Suman. Uh, there is a question for you here uh, by Shreyashi Chaudhary. What are yeah. the sources where we see women as doctors practicing Ayurveda? Since you mentioned in your presentation, uh, what sources do you have for uh, contending that? And uh, also, there are books on uh, how women are uh, playing as doctors, and, uh, like you can see here, a book. There you can see women as uh, military leaders and women, uh, women as doctors and many more books you can go through that. But I have taken, uh, I have gone through this uh, internet statistical data. Okay. Uh, thank you. There is uh, uh, the next presenter, Shruti Shrimani. Uh, she wants to ask you a question, but it has okay. not been posted in the chat box. Uh, can I, I am audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to ask a question about media bell period. Uh, you wanted to see, Mane, Abni, you wanted to see that a media bell period woman life is like a dark age life. Hindu, I know that uh, there is Jahanara or Rashanara, the daughters of Saha Jahan, they also participate in maritime trades and they have a trade shipping or other things. So, why do not you tell about that? Talked about that. The daughters of the Orange, uh, they were not only active in uh, maritime trade practices in, in Southeast Asia, they were also active in uh, giving donations and patronage for temples as well as for royal architectural buildings of middle uh, architecture. They, they constructed so many canals and buildings. Yeah, that was the only limited, only of elite uh, uh, class we can see that they were, uh, they were engaged in such kind of activities, but the mass we see, they were devoid of uh, these kinds of rights or education and uh, such things. So, uh, if we assess on uh, on classroom um, level, then we can see the women were, they were uh, confined to their household things, they were confined to their house, uh, houses only because of certain reasons. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so let's move on to the last paper presentation of this session. Uh, it is by, uh, once again, Shruti ji, uh, it's your paper. I am audible. Uh, yes, yes, uh, you can please uh, uh, present. I already sent the presentation to Nidhi, madam. Can she share? Nidhi, are you there? Ah, uh, yes, sure, ma'am, I'll share it. Just give me a minute, ma'am. I'll share it. Uh, Shreyashi okay. ji has uh, made, a, uh, made an observation in the chat box. We cannot call any period as dark age. Of course, in every period, there has been some or the other kind of development, whether it is literary or um, in uh, fine arts or in any other sector. Uh, but there will be some development. So, in one sense, it is true. Until you share the presentation, uh, we can take the question which was directed towards Nita, ma'am. Uh, yes, yes, sure. Ma'am, are you there? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. There is one question for you uh, by Shreyashi ji. Uh, thank you, Geeta, ma'am, for the excellent presentation. Can particular food items also be gendered? 
Uh, yes, for example, rice. <coughs> That is the prerogative of the rich Brahmin family, not only class, but also caste. And uh, whereas the poor people use sorghum and millet, and it was only the upper privileged class that used uh, rice. And this was also gendered. And we also uh, find that um, this was also used for uh, religious uh, purposes also. So there is both uh, not only a gender, but also a class and uh, even a caste uh, construct for this uh, food, for food items also. Thank you, ma'am. Anidhi, the presentation. Yes. Uh, okay. Shruti ji, you can, uh, can kindly start. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at first, first I, I want to thank all, all of you for in, for uh, uh, arrange such a program. Uh, I am from Kolkata, so there is, I naturally speak in Bengali, so there are problem with my language, so I will try my best to do so. Uh, at first, I want to say that I believe in one, in one word that's called by Mahatma Gandhi, that if you educate a man, you educate an individual, but if you educate a woman, you educate an entire family. I believe in that word. But the thing, when the COVID-19 started, uh, the woman education hampered so much. Here at first, you can see the first slide that uh, before COVID-19, student, especially female student also, enjoyed to go to school. And when the COVID-19 started, urban areas also started to learn education. They started education in online mode. And they have so many opportunities but what and we know that in rural area and remote rural area there have so many problems about education government took so many uh, project about that to give all uh, give all people equal education but in what happened in small town which is called kosba in hindi so i want to focus on that area next slide please here, yeah, yeah, I, I want to focus in area, yeah, women education at small town or Koshba in primary sector, focusing on lower class income people and middle class people's female child education. Uh, a government project that come from central and state board. Uh, we know about central or that uh, means that uh, central government started with, next slide, uh, Diksha or Swam Prabha TV channel use radio Shiksha Bhabani to educated women and other boys. As an West Bengal state government also started to some project like Para Shikshala, Didi Bangla TV program, Midday Meal Scheme, Ekashi for minority students, etc. But into the rural area, we can see that. Uh, next slide. Uh, we can see in West Bengal at first that uh, the school lockdown from March 23, uh, 2020 and reopened after a long time period, two years later, 7, 7 February 22. And at that time, para start where only class one or class two in primary sector join at a time or class two or class four join at another time. So that's entire education was hampered and in this scenario women students uh, who are from lower class drop out from the school uh, in my paper i uh, want to give the statistic data entirely and uh, the upper class and middle class upper class people happen like student women's life did not female student life did not change so much but into the life of the middle class female student, they change entirely. Uh, here come a uh, thing, private or government school. We naturally think that if we send our child to private school, we our student, uh, our child get better education. But when the COVID started, we can see uh, or, or in our, our area, area small Koshba, where, where I do the case study, study. Here, here I can see that the female student they drop out from private school and goes to government school because for their family issues. But boy student they did not have to change entire school or they did not change the entire school and 
Um, their their life, life did not change hamper, but when, when the girl students came, came to the government school, the syllabus already changed, changed and, and so many things happened. happened. So, so their further educational life hampered so much. And I, I wanted, wanted to project it through, through my entire paper, do uh, uh, doing a case study. study. Um, uh, next, next slide, please. please. I, wanted I wanted to. Do, do a case study here. here. So here you can see that Makoda Bamashundi Primary School and Makoda Girls Hyatus Primary School. Uh, here I gave a uh, two rational data. You can see how money, how students change their uh, sector uh, from private school to primary uh, governmental school and government school. And when the trauma is over, they also boy students who came to the uh, uh, little match to. Government, government school, school they, they change their ratio and, and they go back, back. but go, the female student have to stay into the government, government school because their family did not support their education so much and, and another thing that happened uh, uh, just a second the discrimination about the role enrollment boys students goes to only to the boys high school at a school and girls student only goes to girls school if they and, and that scenario we can see today in 21st century so here i can want to, to stop because there is so much uh, rainfall here in my kolkata and it is so please thanks to everyone thank you shruti ji for the uh, presentation it is really very insightful uh, are there any questions for this uh, last uh, presentation if there are any questions, we can take one question, I guess. Okay, so there are no questions. I, uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Korabi Mitra ji has written a good paper, Shruti. So, thank you, ma'am. And uh, I request uh, the chairperson of the session, Dr. Ambika Patel, ma'am, to please give her remarks on this occasion. Uh, thank you, Manali. Uh, it was indeed a good opportunity to listen to a variety of people speaking on women. And though our uh, theme was um, women, mediums, and heritage, I could not, I'm disappointed because I could not hear much on uh, mediums and heritage, but of course, more on women. Nevertheless, that's an area which is, uh, you know, when we talk of uh, you know, you know women, women empowerment and gender, gender equality and many other things in various fields, various, various sectors. Uh, that's, that's of course a very demanding area to talk on. on. To start that's with, I will pick up Dr. Dr. Gita's uh, presentation on Indian food, the traditional food, and uh, uh, her historical narrative in terms of putting the uh, social fabric and looking at how uh, women. Uh, you know, you know compromises, compromises uh, and then, and then at the end she said it's it's a ray for hope and resilience so uh, a lot of compromises still have some hopes and resilience in that context uh, and i'm sure that because she is she's written as she's a founder for dh i do not understand what is this dh is this something on digital heritage no, it is destination heritage we're into okay. a whole lot of heritage activities okay wonderful so uh, 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 a great appreciation from our side for that, the work that you are doing. Uh, uh, and of course, your work and your age uh, put you in a situation to talk about hope and resilience, and uh, I appreciate that. And I still think you can have, uh, maybe you can pull out some more liter literature and evidences to connect with the facts which you said to make it more authentic uh, and to make people accept that. Uh, to, my to my second opinion and uh, observation to two two speakers together, Mr. Shobha Mishra, uh, sorry, Miss Dr. Shobha Mishra and uh, Suman uh, Dhanka. Uh, both of them are assistant professors from various universities, uh, but the papers both of you were talking was in a general sphere. Uh, uh, which I feel because now you are in a teaching realm and a lot of expectation from both of you. So I feel uh, the paper could have been a little more very, very specific to the context rather than 
generally talking about historical periods from time to time because these are available in uh, historic books but what exactly uh, if it is women in public sphere or women in uh, you know when you're talking about a contribution in uh, national movement uh, shobha mishra has talked uh, elaborately she answered the question wonderfully uh, but the point she mentioned about miss usha mehta who has actually started the radio uh transmission during uh, azadi ka you know uh, when we were doing the independence movement and i think that is to be commendable to be noted uh, because maybe uh, i was just thinking when i was listening to her rather than saying many names at least if she could focus on one lady and her contribution and then bring that something like the untold stories to the public will be more The same goes with uh, Suman Ji, where possibly she can bring in more, uh, because she was also talking about, uh, you know, no records about certain uh, uh, contribution of the mass, and also I remember uh, Manali uh, and Nithi also giving some comments on uh, untold stories. We we talk about, you know, uh, un- untold stories as well as uh, the heroes whose stories are not there, like the heroines. of various dimensions and uh, aspects of the social spectrum could be highlighted when you talk about that paper these are just my observations so take it with the right spirit uh, and uh, ramya ji ramya ji i feel you have to learn the technique of presentation bit more to make it because it's live it's going on youtube people will be listening to you so possibly a uh, bit more preparation and uh, to the point talk Uh, and uh, sachi I, i think i should i will give an upload to her because she has done a wonderful presentation uh, putting her point saying that how the women the girl is so significant to the mm, social fabric as well as to support system or our family uh, if at all some pockets of india still have that practice hamara beti bachao beti padhao is still happening so i think we should all have that uh, the you know the ideology to take further and manali do, do i miss out anybody or oh, lastly the shruti uh ramya ji the shruti definitely had some uh, vernacular uh, dialect related uh, thing when they were doing but ramya ji should have been i think maybe uh, focusing more on that heroine the the, the queen because it was the queen who wrote her own story so possibly it was more on queen the area they ruled with a map or maybe some pictures of you know to to understand who are these people actually uh so possibly one uh, that would have been more appreciable and shruti i feel uh, uh you are in master one i have seen uh, some errors in your so i'm teaching i'm now speaking uh, taking my place as a teacher where uh kolkata university just go, go through your slide make some corrections with some spell errors So there starts your presentation where you have to be very very uh, confidential in terms of uh, you know looking at your data and confidence in bringing in uh, it to the public. So they have done a comparative study looking at the schools, COVID situations, and the male female ratio and how they were uh, either benefited or maybe they have been uh, not benefited. Uh, so I think uh, should they still have time to go refine on her presentations. Uh, so in natural i think all the women did so well along with the man who is so the majita suppose it's a man or it's a, i have not seen his picture so i think it's a male uh, uh, big applause to all of you and uh, some more uh, fine tunings for the youngsters and a lot of expectation from the young professors thank you so much and thank you manali and nidhi for this wonderful effort Uh, uh taking, taking up this to next, next level, level because i remember last year we had about the uh, international museum day talk that time also i was traveling but anyway uh, a good appreciation from my end for both of you uh yeah girls promising girls women who are coming further in the history field and take care and namaskar thank you so much ma'am thank you for uh, accepting this uh, invitation and for fulfilling this responsibility as a chairperson of this paper presentation session and for your very very valuable remarks on each paper 
I'm sure all the participants will. Neera ji, I'll just, Manali, I'll just take a minute to say hello to Professor Neera Mishra. We have been. Friends, so I think, I think she is taking up the next session. So I will not uh, take your much time, Niruji, but we'll be in touch. And, and nice to see you, uh, Niruji. You are on mute, uh, ma'am. So, so nice to see you, Ambika. Thank, thank, thank you so much for being there, there and, and we'll be in touch. Yeah, yeah thank you. you. Thank, thank you for everybody. Um, uh, a good evening and a good night to all of you. Thank you so much. But you'll, but you'll be continuing, continuing your session. Yes, you Keep it up. Neeruji is there waiting for you. Yes. No, no, no. It's it's fun being there okay. with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Uh, I think uh, without any further ado, we can jump into the next session. Uh, just I need one minute to end this live stream and begin the next one. Take, Take your time. time.